and welcome back to Royalty Soaps. This is the first soap of 2016 and I am so, so, so excited to make it. It's an oldie, but a goodie. I'm going to concoct a chocolate decadent soap today. I always make this for Valentine's Day. It's a very popular seller and I've decided to do sort of a different fragrance blend for this. So it kind of has a fudge brownie scent and then it also kind of has a cocoa, um, very luxurious milk chocolatey scent too. So put those together together and it's scrumptious. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, please forgive me if the audio is a little strange for this one video. I just got a new Rode video mic and so I'm still trying to figure that out and uh, what settings sound best. But here are all of my oils here. I'm gonna, just going to mix these up real quick. <laughs> And I have the recipe I am using today posted down in this description box below. So here's my water. I'm just going to pour this down the stick blender. I am soaping at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to set this over here to the side to put my stick blender in. Okay. Now this looks nice to me. And then I'm going to pour this batch into three separate containers. Now the thing is, is that this whole batch is going to be sort of a brown color. But I'm going to put some pretty little mica lines in there, so I need to separate it. I'm also going to pour some of it into this container. Now into these three containers I have here, I'm going to put a little scoop of brown oxide that I've pre-mixed with water. Where is my brown oxide? And I'm going to put in about oh, one, two, so let's see, that's half a teaspoon per. And then in this one, I'm putting some titanium dioxide. And this titanium dioxide is from Nurture Soap. It is the best I have found thus far. I'm going to mix this up with a stick blender real quick. All right, so there's the titanium dioxide. Now I'm going to mix these up. Now you can see it's a very, very light brown color. Like I said, this is just to sort of help um, with some even discoloring. Whenever you have a fragrance oil that discolors, I find that adding another color to the base soap sort of helps it, you know, just look evenly discolored. Now for the fragrance oil, I'm not going to add it all at the same time, and there's a reason for this. It's because this fragrance oil tends to thicken up the batter a little bit, and because I want to have time to do a mica line, I need that, that time. So I'm gonna set these off to the side, and now we're gonna start pouring. And something really funny about this fragrance oil blend that I have is initially it whitens the soap. So it goes this like pale, creamy white color, but it's actually gonna turn, of course, really, really dark brown. So time to pour this in. Y'all can probably already see that starting to thicken up. I've got a scrapey scrapey that bowl. You guys know, I just hate having any little speck of anything in there. Okay, so this looks real nice. Now we're going to take the mica. And the mica I have here is called the Queen Catherine. It's from TKB Trading. TKB Trading actually has a new website and it's very pretty and well laid out. So what I'm going to do is take just a little bit, about this much, Maybe a little more, because why not? <laughs> and I'm going to put it in this little mini, what is actually a tea strainer, but what I use for helping me do mica lines. And because this fragrance discolors the soap so dark, this mica um, sprinkling here doesn't need to be perfect, and it doesn't need to cover all of the edges, because you're not going to be able to tell you're just going to see kind of a little sparkly line. And also, as I have said in some of my other videos, if you really want to get an even coating, you can put all of that in, all of this um, mica in, and then you can kind of blow across the top a little bit. It's a little bit messy. It's a little bit of a messy thing to do, but it gets the coating really even across the top. 
It looks really nice in like white soaps and such. I'll show you here just a little bit. See how nice and pretty that makes it look? It does kind of make a mess on the ends there, so be careful of that. I'm gonna put some more over here to this side. And we're gonna do the same on this side as I did over there. I'm gonna mix it up with my stick blender real quick. And now I'm gonna take this white that I have over here and I'm just gonna kind of plip plop it into this brown soap that I have. This will kind of give it a pretty marbled look. That white isn't gonna be very visible by the time this cures. At least it hasn't been in the past. All right, scrape so that off to the side. Now it's time to do the mica again. Okay, there's one side. Tap that down. There's another side. Tap that down. Now I can fill all the rest of it in. So after I fill this in, I'm just gonna tap them down once more. Then I'm gonna mix up all of my piping and wait for that to set up, which normally takes around 15 to 20 minutes. And I'll be back to pipe the top in the classic style that I do for the chocolate decadent soap. everybody so it is about 48 hours later here is what the soap looks like in the mold and so I'm going to show you guys how to unmold it so with this mold it has a sliding bottom so I'm going to start pulling on this and as I'm pulling on it I'm going to put my hand underneath the soap here so I essentially just pulled the bottom out now I'm the one holding the soap then I'm going to push it out just like this so now it's in its little silicone liner here. And now, here's the liner. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my finger here, my hands are clean, and I'm just gonna pull, just like this. Then I'm gonna do it on the other side. Now I'm gonna lift it up, pull it off the end, and slide it right off the soap. You can see it unmolds very, very clean with the um, soap recipe that I used. And there we go. There's the log of soap unmolded. Most of the time I would use my 18 bar cutter Evangeline, but because I space these a little funny, I'm gonna have to cut them individually with my bud cutter. 
So that's what it looks like on the inside. And you can see, I'll show you right here on this one, that it's darker around the edge here, and that is the browning that's going to occur all the way through the bar. And you can see this one's a little straighter on the bottom. This one's a little more lumpy and raggedy, but this will darken up a whole lot more as it continues to sit and be exposed to the air. And oh my goodness, every time I cut these bars, I always am just, I, I'm so excited because it smells so much like chocolate. It's like lighting a candle in the room because it's so chocolatey smelling and it's so fragrant. You can also probably see that the little wisps of white that I poured in there, again, they're very faint, just like I said. It's going to be very, very light colored, and it's just sort of supposed to add to the um, authenticity of it, sort of it being not exactly perfect all the way through, that there will be, you know, some discoloration like if you had in a chocolate cake that it wouldn't look the same. There might be like some little air bubbles or some lighter spaces or whatever. That's why I do that. I used to make these with really, really white, like big plops of really white so that it looked kind of like icing. And I like doing that too. It's just, this is how I wanted to do it this time. I change it up every time. <laughs> So I'm just going to cut the rest of these bars and put them on the curing racks and they will be available on February 5th. So thanks you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and maybe even leave me a comment below. And I will see you all next time. So until then, you go have yourself a royal day and bye for now.